Today is Thursday, May 7th. Welcome to this edition of Nevada County Now. The time of filming, there are no new cases of COVID-19 to report, so our total remains at 41 laboratory confirmed cases, 29 in eastern Nevada County and 12 in western Nevada County. There are no confirmed active cases. Nevada County Public Health lists 40 recovered and just the one death. The total number of tests performed in the county still sits at 1,469 and expect the testing numbers to continue to rise with the two new testing sites open. The turnaround time for a test at the new sites is about 72 hours. So since the first tests were performed Tuesday, we can expect to be getting results back in the next day or two. Visit MyNevadaCounty.com slash coronavirus for the most up-to-date information. Yesterday, Nevada County Public Health Officer Dr. Ken Cutler released an update for the community about our current testing, wearing a mask, and an update on Phase 2. Let's see what he had to say. I'm Ken Cutler, your Nevada County Public Health Officer, here on May 6th with an update about COVID-19. So in Nevada County, we've had 41 people who have laboratory-confirmed infections with COVID-19. Um, you can Always find updated information at mynevadacounty.com slash coronavirus. And what you'll see there is that we also have posted um, the age groups of people who have been identified with COVID um, and whether they live in eastern or western side of the counties, because you'll see that there's some difference there. Um, we also talk about following active cases. That means people that are uh, at home in isolation or in the hospital and we're checking on their status, checking in with them until they're released from isolation according to Centers for Disease Control guidance, which is currently that if somebody has an identified COVID-19 infection, they can be released from their isolation after they've had no fever for three days and that's without a fever reducing medicine, that their respiratory symptoms have improved for three days and that it's been at least 10 days since the onset of their symptoms. Which brings me to the next point, is that we anticipate that the number of people with laboratory confirmed COVID-19 will go up as our ability to test goes up. OptumServe site in Grass Valley started yesterday. Um, they have the ability to see over 100 people a day by appointment, um, and so that greatly increases our capacity to test people, uh, both those who have symptoms, um, and in the past it's been harder for people with mild symptoms to get tested, and then certain people who don't have symptoms but are in higher risk settings, uh, they're in essential services, uh, essential employment, they've been healthcare workers or first responders and want to check on their status. So that's available as well. Plus. We've worked in concert with our partners in Placer County to make sure that they have a site in Kings Beach accessible to those Nevada County residents on the eastern side of our county. As we anticipate more laboratory confirmed cases being identified with the increased ability to test, we also have really increased our ability to contact those people, have them isolate so they're not spreading the disease, and also interview them about their close contacts so they can be quarantined and monitored. And so uh, the staff has been trained on that. We've brought in extra uh, people as those numbers go up, we'll expand accordingly. We do recommend that people use cloth face coverings when going out. Um, we want people to stay home as much as possible, really go out only for essential services. But there are times when you go out where it's harder to maintain that six feet of distance. People have been doing an excellent job at helping us decrease the transmission of COVID-19 in our community by maintaining physical distancing, washing their hands, um, disinfecting surfaces, et cetera. But one thing in addition to that that we do strongly recommend is that you wear a cloth face covering in the appropriate way. So that means that you wash your hands prior to putting it on, you hold it by the ear loops or bring it up, not in an area around your face. You put it on and you rewash your hands. If you inadvertently touch it unintentionally, uh, please wash your hands again. And a reminder that having this shouldn't prompt you to go out more than you were in the past and shouldn't 
make you feel more secure getting closer to people. When I wear it, I help protect you. When you wear it, you help protect me. So I'm encouraging everyone who can wear a mask to do so. We don't want children under the age of two to wear them. And sometimes people have been advised by their doctor because of either breathing or other difficulties that they have with masks not to wear them. But for most people, when you go out, please cover your face. As many of you have heard, uh, California as a state uh, has been under the stay at home orders. Those are still in place, but California is gonna move from stage one, which is where we're at now, uh, which is people leaving homes only for essential services to stage two, which will allow limited uh, increase in retail uh, abilities with curbside pickup. Those will be sporting goods stores, bookstores, uh, retail for clothing. Um, and as we progress with that, we'll also start looking at ways to increase in a safe and gradual and incremental way where more businesses can reopen. Many rural hospitals across the country were struggling even before the pandemic hit. The forced cancellation of many elective procedures has hit them especially hard. Staff writer for the union, Sam Corey, has put together a story detailing the struggles of these hospitals with particular focus on Sierra Nevada Memorial Hospital. In it, he notes that Sierra Nevada Memorial Hospital is one of the largest employers in the county, with 650 full-time employees and about 800 total staff. They have applied for federal stimulus funding with the hope of remaining stable. Sierra Nevada Memorial Hospital President and CEO, Dr. Brian Evans, wrote in an email, we anticipate that we will receive enough funding to partially offset the impact of COVID-19, and notes that delaying elective surgeries is creating a significant decrease in revenue for Sierra Nevada Memorial Hospital, and most other hospitals around the country. But made it clear, non-emergency surgeries and practices will only occur once testing increases, enough personal protective equipment is supplied, and there is a sustained reduction of COVID-19 cases in the area. We will continue to plan and prepare for all of these things and ask for the support and partnership of our community, he wrote. That is why we are here. Visit theunion.com to read the whole article and get all the details. The United Way of Nevada County has recently opened the 2020 partner application process. United Way of Nevada County partners and collaborates with organizations that share the view that the way to improve lives is by mobilizing the caring power of communities. Committing to address basic needs, such as helping alleviate food insecurity, providing emergency shelter, and making access to health care a priority is the focus of United Way and its partner agencies. United Way of Nevada County provides partner organizations with a number of privileges including community designations, funding opportunities, collaborative network opportunities, inclusions in brochure and marketing, and the use of the United Way brand. Current United Way of Nevada County partners can apply to continue partnership in any community-based nonprofit 501c3 organization that has provided health and human services to the residents of Nevada County for at least three years may apply to be a new United Way of Nevada County partner. The partner application is available at www.uwnc.org. If you have any questions about the application, please email admin at uwnc.org. All applications are due May 28, 2020. While this pandemic has been difficult for many, the older, more at-risk population have had to be especially careful. We have a number of senior care facilities in our county which house this particular population. I sat down with Walter Ford of the Union who's been talking to the senior care homes around the county to find out how they are coping during the pandemic. So I'm joined today by Walter Ford, a staff writer for the Union. How are you doing today, Walter? Good. Thanks for having me on, Cole. Absolutely. So I, I hear you've been working on a, a story about our senior care homes. So what can you tell me about what's going on with them? Yeah, I reached out to a lot of the facilities in our area and kind of discovered or dug into some of the issues that they've been faced with during the, the COVID-19 pandemic and kind of just looked at some of the challenges they've had to tackle as they, as they navigate it with such a high-risk population that they're charged with their care for. Yeah, that's got to be kind of scary for some of them, I'm sure. 
And, and that's kind of what I've heard from a lot of the administrators that it, that it is a scary time, but and that's why they've taken the precautions that they have. A lot of lock um, lockdowns across the board. Um, you know, visitation is kind of taken on a whole new approach um, without being able to do person to person. Um, I'm hearing stories about family members coming to windows and, and then calling on their cell so they could talk through the window and then they could still see each other. Um, a lot of uh, social media reaching out, Zoom meetings, a lot of uh, technological uh, approaches to, to making sure that the, the seniors and the elderly folks in our community still have that connection to their loved ones. Yeah, that's very important right now. And I, I'm sure they've been uh, having some struggles, I would guess, with trying to implement some of that kind of stuff, especially right, right away. You know, um, what I'm hearing from the administrators is, is you know, it, it's the, the, their residents are getting antsy, but, but I think for the most part, people understand, um, you know, and they've had to get creative with the way they, they stay um, active and then the, the activities they do with the, the, the people charged uh, the, in their care. And um, it's been uh, an interesting trial for a lot of them, I believe. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, so, but a lot of them are, are, have held steadfast that they're going to continue their lockdowns until they are absolutely sure that it, it's safe. Um, to start opening their doors. Okay, that's probably wise. And so, so what kinds of things have they been doing to, to try to keep busy besides, I mean, you, you mentioned the technology stuff, but what, what other sorts of activities and things have they been doing? Oh, I was talking to the folks at Bret Hart Retirement Inn in downtown Grass Valley, and, and every Friday evening they'd have this thing called Nip and Nibble, where the, the, the people at their place would have, um, you know, uh, wine and hors d'oeuvres, and, and a local musician or performer would come in and and that has kind of had to been, you know, shut down because of the lockdown and they can't have performers come in. But what they're telling me is it's turned into this thing where now the, the seniors in their care are entertaining themselves. They're, they're doing show and tells with each other. They're sharing <laughs> stories. I guess this Friday um, they're doing travel stories where they're all going to share their stories. And, and they actually saw a silver lining in that, that it's brought the, the, their, their residents even closer together um, throughout this. And, you know, it's, it's a small silver lining uh, among a lot of, you know, chaos and uncertainty, but, um, you know, it, it's something that they think is, has been a positive out of all this, uh, this pandemic stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're all kind of looking for as much of that kind of stuff as we can find, you know, it's, it's been a struggle for everybody and, and anything good, any silver lining is, is nice to hear. So that's great. Agreed. Uh, so what, what other kinds of things have you been finding out about, about how they've been dealing with this? You know, a lot of them have stepped up their, their cleaning protocols. Um, you know, uh, Things are getting clean on a more regular basis. Um, and it's just a, a heightened sense of safety. Um, you know, it, it was already a, a high risk population. Um, and then you, you throw in a pandemic and it just, it just, um, it, it became very serious. And, and, and I've seen from the administrators that they've all done a, a, a really good job of, of stepping up these protocols, whether it's taking temperatures for essential visitors that may have to come in or, or you know, being overly cautious about employees or staff members that may have uh, you know, shown symptoms or something like that. So, you know, it, it, it really is, um, you know, a lot of their stuff is, is standard protocol, just heightened, um, just, just taken to the next level um, as they navigate this pandemic. Gotcha. Okay. And, and so when is, when is your article going to be coming out? Article comes out uh, Friday morning. It'll be out tomorrow morning. Okay, great. Well, I'm sure we'll be uh, looking forward to reading that. Right on. Thanks for taking the time to join us today, Walter. You got it, Cole. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Walter. People are finding fun ways to keep busy during the stay-at-home order. One local family has been particularly creative in that endeavor. The Zazbo family, Christy, Ashton, and their eight-year-old daughter Sequoia, have been making YouTube videos, many featuring yoga, but all with fun themes that will appeal to kids. They've done Star Wars, pirates, superheroes, and even Bob Ross. We'll leave you today with a look at some of their work. And be sure to check out their YouTube or Facebook pages and read the article about them at theunion.com for more information about what this family's been up to. Remember, stay safe, take care of each other. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm Black Barnacle Scourge of the Poopy Seas. I am Lily Heartbeard at your service. And we're here for some pirate yoga today. So I hope all me mateys are ready to see the high heels for adventure. Why does it take a pirate so long to learn the alphabet? Because they can spend years at sea. <laughs> With your fingers forward, if you don't have a finger and you just have a hook, then take your hook forward. Feet out in front. 
Press and lift your body up away from the floor, making the shape of a pirate treasure chest. Arr. Are you oak or mahogany? Mahogany. Arr. Stay strong in your back leg. Try not to lose it. That's right. You don't want to fall into the ocean. <sighs> Stick out your arms. And fence. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. What's orange and sounds like a parrot? A carrot! Ha ha ha!